This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, good morning. This is Chris Abraham, the Chris Abraham Show. It's season five, episode seven. And since I went ahead and got all uh, wackadoodle on you in season five, five, episode six, I thought I would uh, continue. Uh, and since there's so much going on right now in the news about um, the right to abortion and uh, miscarriage medicine, and the attempt that judges are making to abate that or to make that difficult or impossible or to limit access, I thought I would do my hot take on abortion by Chris Abraham. So either turn off your podcast right now, delete me from your subscription, and let's get on with this. All right. So I have never judged anybody for getting an abortion. I have as a young man growing up in Hawaii and and in my late teens and early 20s have been the guy who would escort a friend to the clinic. Um, That said, I've never personally as far as I know, and that's not a for as far as I know, I don't have children. But as far as I know, anybody who might have gotten pregnant from me has never told me about it, uh, has never, I've never escorted a lover to get a, an abortion. And I think that might be the direct result of caring about caring very much about uh, birth control, caring very much about carrying condoms and having condoms, caring very much about uh, having frank conversations with my lovers to see whether or not they are on um, birth control. That said, I've done the, like, I don't want to wear a condom thing. I've been that terrible guy in my life. I don't, and I'm not proud of it. Um, and I have had one girlfriend and it broke my heart who took the, uh, morning after pill after we had a mis uh, a, a mistake, a condom, uh, mistake. So while I've never had to take someone who has a plus on their birth control, on their birth, on their, um, pregnancy test, I have been with a woman who has taken a, the, you know, day after pill and had the ensuing uh, nausea and vomiting and all the other kind of uh, stuff as a result. And that broke my heart because that's, you know, one of the five women who I've really loved and would have considered being with forever. So there's that sadness, but I don't think that... I think the outcome would have been the same whether it was within 72 hours or whether it was within, you know, 72 days, right? So um, that was the right thing to do. So with regards to abortion on the greater level, I am so happy that I have never had to be part and parcel of a an abortion. I think that my mom never got over her daughter, Tara Ann Abraham, Tara, 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 who very late in the pregnancy, she lost a miscarriage. She never got over her. She remembered her birthday and that sort of thing. Um, my mom was definitely someone who wanted a daughter. But... Um, And there were times when my parents uh, were being extremely unhappy with each other. And my mom thought it was an okay thing to tell her young son that in many cases she wished she never had been with my dad and maybe been with her 
banker boyfriend or gone across the country with her girlfriend and moved to San Francisco, right? I think that might have been code for maybe my mom was uh, either bisexual or maybe um, LGBTQ plus, IA plus, I don't know. But my, you know, there were times when they really weren't working out and I felt like the linchpin that kept them together. And I said, well, I'm, I don't seem to be that attached to this life. Like I'm not, like I'm not suicidal, but I'm, you know, give or take. Like if it made them happier, I would have relinquished this life on earth. Like I'm not the kind of person who is like, holy crap, I'm so grateful to have been born. I'm grateful to this many sacrifices they made so as to uh, add my genetic stuff into a world already overpopulated, right? I'm not, I'm not that narcissistic. Maybe I am. Maybe, I mean, my parents seem to be narcissists and all my friends who've ever met my parents fancied them narcissists. And I'm relatively angry that there's a person who is either weed whacking or, uh, or vacuuming or, or leaf blowing in the background, but the recordings have been pretty good. Like I haven't heard a lot of background stuff. So I think that anybody who doesn't desperately want to have children enter into a family, grow a family, put their children and their family and their wife first as a man, put their spouse, put their children first ahead of and never use the excuse of I'm working all the time for you or anything else like that like if they if you're really into the vocation the committed lifetime vocation of being part of a larger family and you have the resources and money and education and selflessness and passion and desire not to constantly kvetch and if you constantly kvetch then make sure that it's openly and outwardly known by everybody to be um, good-natured and playful and with a uh, wink in your eye. God, I'm so bummed by that. I wonder if you can hear it. Uh, so on that note, um, you know, I'm, I'm low-key uh, Anglo-Catholic. I'm low-key Episcopalian. And uh, I will need to wait till this guy stops doing this. I will be right back. Hey, I'm back. Uh, Damn, that really sucked. There were two dudes with uh, gasoline-powered leaf blowers. You can still hear them in the background, but it's less bad than it was like five seconds ago. Uh, yeah, I'm low key, uh, grew up Irish Catholic. I didn't know how my identity was defined by being Catholic until back in 1996. I found out that my high school girlfriend, uh, had a mom who's like, don't sleep with the Catholic boy. He'll leave you if you put out. So, but I look back and I, I definitely think that my decisions are based on very much a, uh, Judeo-Christian uh, assortment of of values and morals and dogma and as a result I do think that if I had an abortion or or was part of an abortion with a partner or whatever I, I feel like that would personally be for me you know a sin uh, and I do feel like I would be killing um, a, a fetus a, a potential child and I believe that when conception happens, I believe that a, you know, I believe that that is a, a baby. That said, I don't believe anybody else has to have my view. I do not believe in proselytizing. I do believe that a majority of the people I know are humanists and uh, atheists and even, you know, Christians who don't believe that abortion is a sin um, or is killing or um, and I don't even think that my Jewish friends have an issue with it with abortion because I do think that the health of the mother is important and even if I was in a 
relationship. I would not throw myself on the grenade known as blowing up the relationship because I insist that my partner have an abortion. I believe that the... I believe more... I believe in autonomy of self and personal decision more than I do of um, any type of sin like this. Besides, right, it's built in to be forgiven. Forgiven is built into the, into the, uh, into the recipe. Uh, the only thing is, is that I believe that what hell is after you die, um, and I heard this from some very wise people, Father Downing, for example, is you put yourself in hell. When you die, if you don't feel worthy of the gifts of everlasting life that you're given by uh, the oversoul, by the other, by God, by goddess, by universe, you can uh, feel a permanent shame that precludes you from accepting the blessings of heaven. So I feel like if you get a lot of abortions or any abortions or or sin against people you love or 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 murder or kill or steal or do anything that weighs heavily upon your your immortal soul um you need to find a way of processing those before you pass away i mean that's basically what uh the tibetan book of the dead is about right it's about processing trauma and karma and sin and guilt and being able to let those things go before you enter the uh, uh, the warm embrace of the other. So I feel that I have no judgment. In fact, like I said, if you don't feel like even, even if, if you just don't want to have a kid, that's good enough reason for me never to have one. Like until you really, really want to, if you really, 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 it's like freaking basic parenting 101. Like if you you can have a puppy as long as you can promise me that mom doesn't take care of the puppy. You take care of the puppy. You walk the puppy. You take the puppy to the vet. You make sure that it takes its worm pill. You feed the puppy. You water the puppy. You brush the puppy. Uh, and you commit to the puppy until... The puppy is 9 to 15 years old and passes away, and you can deal with that too. Um, you incur the expense of the puppy. The puppy does not go on to state funding. The puppy is not a village puppy. You need to be personally responsible. It takes a village to raise a child, but it's not about dumping uh, the puppy on the village, right? That, that said, I honestly think that all children should have their babies... Uh, before college and then dump those babies on their parents and uh, because like everybody says it's healthiest and least dangerous and least complicated to have all your babies before you become geriatric in terms of your uterus so um, and that's not a gender thing because both men and women can have uteri uh, let's see what else yeah so in all things, right, if you can deal with the crime, then if you can deal with the time, do the crime. Like, if you don't even think it's a crime at all, then that's good for you. Like, I honestly don't think that there should just be, if you can, if you can have unfettered access to an abortion, you should be able to have that abortion up till the day of conception. I mean, if you really don't want a child, I mean, I don't think there should be any coercion for you to go through full term birth just to put your child up to adoption unless that is what your inner goddess is telling you to do, right? I feel like no guilt, no trauma, let it go, let it let let go, let God, let goest, let goddess. I personally uh think that Making the choice of whether or not to have a child, whether or not to abort a child, whether or not to use protection, whether or not to be responsible, whether or not to step up, 
or really being clear as to whether or not you eventually want kids or whether you want kids now or whether you never want kids and then making that personal decision. All decisions will be your personal story, will be your personal trauma, will be your personal karma, and will be the decisions you need to make. Like, I believe that I was too careful in my life. I don't have any babies. I don't have any babies I don't know of. I have ex-wives, but only because that's what I call my long-term ex-girlfriends. Um, There were a number of women who I believe would have said yes to marrying me. There are a number who I wanted to marry who wouldn't have me. Um, I don't have a wife. I really don't have an ex-wife. I don't have kids going to college or graduating college or having conversations uh, on their first days of considering marriage saying, who's going to get stuck with your freaking crazy ass dad? Like, there's nobody like that. My only tribe, and I have a hard time juggling them, is an assortment, a motley assortment of friends and uh, and what I consider family, you know? Uh, my buddy Keith, my buddy Mark, my buddy Andrew, uh, my buddy Mira, uh, Monica, uh, David, Mike, uh, Kaushik. Uh, Frickin' David Gellis, and Min, and Amy, and Sarah. Like, there's... And, and if I didn't include you, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a terrible, terrible... Oh, David Cohen. Frickin'... Like, there's just tons and tons of people. Even my recent ex, um, Betsy, you know? Like, totally, I feel like she is a strange family, but I feel like we became family in that time. Even uh, Michelle Nolan, who uh, I don't get to see that much anymore, but that's mostly on me. Like, I'm desperately in love with her as a friend. Like, I cannot regret anything. She was my grad school. Like, she was literally my grad school. So, I don't judge anybody for being homeless. I don't judge anybody for the decisions they've made. I believe that you should have unfettered access to the decisions you want to make. I believe that includes um, the ability to end your life when and how you want, as long as you think it through. Um, abort or terminate or discontinue any type of... And even if you have cancer and don't want to be treated, as long as you have an honest conversation with everybody involved in your family, I think you should be able to make uh, end-of-life decisions uh, not based on... Uh, being 30 seconds away from being intubated. And I don't think... um, Oh, but I do think you guys should know that um, uh, do not resuscitate is freaking a dirty game. Like, do not sign a do not resuscitate uh, form unless you really want to die. Because, like, I had heart failure and I had sleep apnea while I was under and uh, Alexandria Hospital lost me on the operating table during my recovery for three whole minutes and they did resuscitate me but potentially if I had a DNR I would have been freaking dead like I would have been dead like uh, date of date of date of uh, date of death Um, you know January something 2017 Um, so yeah, so there's that. So I do not believe that there should be any states where you can't get an abortion. I don't believe that any doctor should not be able to prescribe. I think that any type of abortion pill should be, uh, served over the counter at a pharmacy. And the only reason I believe that is because there might be side effects like, um, bleeding and so forth that you really need to be aware of. Um, You need to know when spotting turns into bleeding and when bleeding turns into an issue that might require you to go to the doctor. Um, That's it. Like, while my decisions might be made uh, in a spiritual light based on a Judeo-Catholic tradition and being a um, uh, an Episcopalian, I do not proselytize. I do not. I respect all faiths. 
I respect Southern Baptists. I respect um, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, um, anybody. Like I, I, I appreciate people observing Ramadan and Passover and Saturday as the Sabbath and Sunday as the Sabbath and. I have come to terms with the fact that my Indian teams has an infinite number of uh, celebratory days and, um, and, um, uh, and amen to that, right? So, and, and I really encourage people to terminate pregnancy if they really, 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 really do not want to have a child. I think that even though you might figure it out and even though it might be the insecurity talking and so forth, uh, we do not necessarily, we do not need unbeloved, unwanted, undesired, unadored, it takes a village to raise a child, sweet little lumps of joy that everybody is completely like who nobody ever says, you know, I think my dad or someone's dad said something about, you know, what kind of boat I could have bought if I didn't have bought, if I didn't have you or what kind of car I could have had if I didn't have you or the cost of, of college or the cost of private school or any of that stuff, any of that evil shit that a parent puts on you, you should turn around and be like, Listen, I was born post, um, I was born, I was, I was conceived of post, post Roe v. Wade, motherfucker. Like, you didn't have to freaking have me, you son of a bitch. I'm a fucking mitzvah. I'm, uh, I'm a mitzvah, you son of a bitch. And fuck you. I'm never going to have grandkids for you or great grandkids for you. And your line is going to die through me, you fuck. That's what you should say. Because um, modern American men and women have the um, agency to decide whether or not they want to engage in family making, family building, family planning, uh, or any of those other kinds of things. And I love my nieces and nephews. I especially love my community nieces and nephews. I have a friend who in her 40s terminated a pregnancy by a man she really didn't like. And my only response to that was she would have made an amazing mother, right? Like, um, I was sad because she had an opportunity to become a mom. But I don't think maybe she really wanted to be a mom. Or I don't think she felt like she was secure to be a mom. Or for whatever reason, that decision was hers and she should not ever second guess herself ever. Because like I said, what hell is, is going into the next life or going to heaven or going to the pearly gates or meeting St. Peter or meeting, uh, your judge or meeting your Jesus or your Allah or your, uh, you're a Shem or whatever, like you should meet your deity and you should go in boldly and say, thank you very much for all the fish. I really appreciate that experience of getting to know the world and allowing you to get to know the world through me. And I feel um, blessed. I feel like it was an entire, it was a total mitzvah. I, I laughed and I cried. It was the best story of my entire life, including, um, including, uh, Harry Potter. And thank you very much. And, uh, what's my next job? Uh, sir, yes, sir. So there you go. Anyway, that is my story. And, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. I do not, like I said, in short, I do not in any way have any judgment, not even passive aggressive, not even behind your back, not even like tisk tisk. Like I don't have any feelings about anybody's decision to terminate their pregnancy or to 
do a morning after pill or anything short of what can I do for you? What do you need to, um, what do you need to salve this pain? Do you have pain? Do you need a hug? Do you need to talk? Do you need to explore uh, any sadness that you're feeling? Or if I'm involved, do you blame me? Are you angry at me? Do you uh, accuse me of doing this to you? Uh, are there things we need to work out? Or is this the end? Uh, am I dead to you? Or is, are we just doing pantomimes, right? This is never about a, an aborted fetus. This is never about a, um, a child that has lost a miscarriage. This is about the living, right? And if you do not fully express, explore, communicate, discuss, share to death. Because don't forget, no matter how much the, uh, the woman who had the abortion uh, might want to believe that the trauma only happened to them, uh, the trauma happens in lesser or greater forms to everybody involved. Um, trauma is generous with its pain. And um, like I said in my last episode, even though it was not me uh, or not my wife or not my mother or not my daughter or not my sister who committed suicide over Christmas um, and not even a very like everyday close friend. Um, I have feelings and experience and traumas and so forth of my own in relationship to that loss through suicide of a person I love. So that's another thing I say that even if you are a casualty of friendly fire as a result of, uh, of people blowing themselves up and blowing each other up, uh, you too need to go to the hospital and have yourself checked out. So I love you too. I love you and I love everybody. And I hope this comes across the way I intended to. And I'll talk to you soon. Because like I always say, once you publish a poem, it's no longer you. Like people could come back to me and call me a monster. And this is why this uh, is very risky. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.